Hello, my name is Ben, or B Dog. It's the name of my channel. Today I'm going to be starting a podcast. It's called Movie Expertise Needed. Quite simply, it's just going to be me on here talking about movies. It's not going to be very formal, very open. Um, at some point, I'll probably start incorporating your questions into it. Um, once people start watching, but this is my first episode, so hopefully in the future I will have other people on my podcast. I have some other people that I've been talking to that are interested, and that eventually is the goal. For today's episode, the format's going to be simple. I'm just going to be talking about a couple of movies that I haven't covered in reviews. Some of them I've seen recently, some of them I haven't. It's a pretty basic uh, format not very complicated. That's probably what I'm going to be doing for a lot of the episodes, especially the ones where I don't have other people on. I'm just going to be taking movies that I've seen recently that I didn't get a chance to do in a review and just talking about them on here. So, as I said before, I'm going to be doing a format where I talk about movies that I haven't covered in a review on my channel in video format. The first movie up is going to be Atomic Blonde. So there have been there there have been a lot of buzz about this movie um, based on Charlize Theron, and you know it's supposed to be touted as a great f female action movie. You know I think they've quite literally said women can be badasses too. That's part of the taglines behind it, and that's one thing that they pushed heavily. And it actually, one of the YouTubers that I watch, he isn't movie related at all. His name's Steven Crowder. He's a political guy uh, and a comedian too. He's been, he did an entire video defunking the action scenes because of the statement that one of the directors or writers or somebody like that put out. And personally, you know, I, I think he was thinking of them a little bit too heavily. They were just trying to make a point because guys are typically the head of action movies. And they, they were just trying to introduce a new element of, you know, it's for the sake of a woman being an action star. I know that. Um, I, did, I thought they handled it well. They didn't handle it great. But it was definite. There were definitely some good elements. Um, I always liked John Goodman. He was a main part of this. I thought James McAvoy's character was great, too. All in all, this movie was good. There's not much more I can say about it. Charlize Theron was good in it, and a, a lot of the actors were good as well. Okay, here's the plot, and I'm just going to read it straight off IMDb. An undercover IMI6 agent is sent to Berlin during the Cold War to investigate the murder of a fellow agent and recover a missing list of double agents. And that's basically it. She's over there, and she's working with CIA and MI6, and uh, John Goodman's a part of the CIA. And that, that's, it's a uh, 1980s Cold War spy movie. And, and it, you know, it was decent. There was a lot of cool action scenes. The story was a little bit dicey at times, and they were trying to push stuff. I, I didn't appreciate the story that much, but it wasn't terrible. Definitely could have been better, but it did. I mean, it, it for the most part, it worked. You know, as I said before, it was, it was fun. Um, and the beginning scene, it, that really intrigued me, the beginning scene of the movie. Um, that kind of set it up really well. I appreciated that part. So, yep, I'm going to start to go into the next movie. So this next movie, it disappointed me, actually. I didn't have a like a ton of expectation, but I had a little bit because I heard of it, and so it's Killing of a Sacred Deer. I did not like this one. It it was a little bit too odd for me. It the story was kind of confusing, and. It was a little bit hard for me to follow. There was a lot of stuff going on. And some stuff just kind of happened. And I'm like, okay, why is that happening? And it had this very dark 
like deep and depressing vibe of like someone who's deeply disturbed and I, I don't necessarily float toward those movies and it had a weird air of sexualness to it that I didn't appreciate either. There were some really awkward scenes on that order and I couldn't appreciate that as well. Um, I mean, it, the color palette, it fit with the style of the movie. I mean, that's what I can say. The movie was, it was shot okay. It was fine on that end. Um, it, and th there were some parts that were... Uh, fine and I, I I think the actors tried but I guess I guess they just couldn't really get that into it because of you know of the story and I mean the, the really that's that's where the problems lie the story just it kind of goes just crazy and it keeps snowballing and then it kind of ends and the, the ending for me I don't, I don't really like it it's um there's a certain, like, I try to be for movies that are outside the norm and have different style endings and, you know, don't necessarily go for that perfect fairy tale ending. But this one just kind of, like, just kind of left me blah. I was just like, okay. I mean, I don't know what to feel. It didn't really leave me with anything, any emotion to feel. It just kind of, like, it didn't end, it didn't like just point blank end, you know, like some movies they're just stopping and like, shouldn't there be more? And I'm just, that wasn't that feeling, but it, it just kind of, I mean, what's, what's the point of telling me this story? I, I don't think there were certain parts. I think they were trying to develop more to create a certain feeling inside of you and it wasn't developed well enough. Um, it was particularly like, a point of Colin Farrell, who is in this movie, um, as well as Nicole Kidman. Um, but Colin Farrell, between the relationship between, like, he's the main character, one of the main characters, and so is uh, this other kid. His name, Colin Farrell's name in the movie is Stephen Murphy, and Martin is uh, played by this young and up-and-coming actor named Barry Cogan. And the the main dynamic is between those two. And that's kind of what the whole movie is about. And some stuff that Collins Farrell's done. And I'm, I, yeah, I just, I can't. It was specifically about Colin Farrell's character. I think that they were trying to make more, I guess, diabolical. But I, I felt like it got lost in the shuffle. And it wasn't as impactful as they intended, so therefore I couldn't care as much as they wanted me to. And it created problems with the emotional storytelling. So I'm I'm really not a, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of this movie. Okay, so the next movie I have up is one that's kind of surprising on the quality of it. Okay, so the movie is Brawl and Cell Block 99. And... You know, this this movie surprised me in a lot of ways. Um, Vince Vaughn, this is one of his best performances. Uh, it's definitely the best of what, I, what I've seen. Hands down, it's, it's a lot more deeper into the character. It's not his typical comedy shtick, you know, where he kind of plays similar characters all throughout, and you're just like, okay, why can't we try something different? Um, but he definitely does it with this movie. It's... You can really dig deep into his character and see his motivation and his struggles and realize what he's doing, why he's doing it, and sympathize with that fact. So this movie is about a guy who, um, he, you know, he's kind of down on his luck. He's got a wife, and but he's going, he's going through some stuff. And the beginning thing of the movie, he gets fired and then he goes back and he starts uh to drug dealing which he was doing in the past and this happens within like the first 15 minutes of the movie so he's he goes back drug dealing and he's looking good and then some stuff happened and he ends up in prison he's got to do some stuff he doesn't want to do because his family's threatened and it's great and just an absolutely 
truly just gritty and dark and just story and a great character piece. Now, yeah, that's kind of the problems with it. There's no... Once the movie really starts to roll, there's really no light at the end of the tunnel. And that's kind of... It's one of those movies that's a little bit heartbreaking because you just, you know, the, what what's going to happen. You can see it coming, but it doesn't matter. It still shocks you to no end. It's, yeah... Uh, it's such a shell shock. Even though you know exactly what's coming. Demon Svon definitely delivers the performance of his career. Um, the other co-stars. His wife Jennifer Carpenter. She plays uh, her her part well too. And um, even and his friend and the guy that he works for, Gil. He's, he's fine. It's it's a very depressing movie. You need to understand that. It's very deep and very dark, and it's probably not going to be for everyone. But it's truly fantastic. Like how much Vince Vaughn got into that character, and just it really you see his struggles, and I I feel like a broken record. But you can see all his motivations, and and you you care for his character. That's that's just how great of a performance he gave, and you know the the tone of the movie is fantastic. It just it really fits, and it just it's very just deep and depressing and dark, and that was important for a movie like this. Um, you know, for me though, as a as a movie watcher though, you also have to understand that. I yeah I really can't I don't know if I can tell people that this is going to be a movie that they like um I wish it was but it's so deep and dark and depressing and gruesome that most people are probably going to be turned off it's one of those things I, I can respect its greatness and enjoy its greatness am I going to watch it a bunch probably not you know, you, you have to be set in for that experience and be prepared to go through that. And if you're not, it kind of, that's why it's not going to be for everyone. So the last movie I'm going to be talking about today is Captain Underpants. Um, the first epic movie, I think that's the full title. I did read a lot of these books as a kid. I wasn't a huge fan. They were for a lot of kids who, who didn't enjoy reading all that much. Um, I was a huge fan of reading. I would read anything. Every, I would try anything. And so these weren't really my cup of tea because they were more comic book style. They There were a lot of pictures. And um, I think at the, that point I found it an insult to my intelligence at how much pictures they had. Um, but they were still entertaining at some point I gave up and I just started to read them and enjoy them you know, I got out of that snob phase and moved on but this this movie was good it was surprisingly good and just plain good they 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 worked it fine um DreamWorks did good with this one uh, they had a good story from what I remember, it followed pretty well with how the books were. Um, of course, there were bunches of books, so you can't count it as one. And I don't remember a bunch about them. But I thought Kevin Hart was good in this movie. Usually I don't like him. He's more of that stupid humor kind of guy. And um, also his, his co-star, because the two main characters are named George and Harold. And then they their professor is Captain Underpants. And... Um, I could barely recognize them, like, as far as their voices go. I could tell it, I could definitely tell it was Kevin Hart, but it wasn't his normal stick, which I, I understand why it wasn't, and that's good. It's shown a little bit more range by him, because he usually plays the same shtick, and, you know, up until now, it kind of surprised me who his co-star was, as Harold, because Kevin Hart played George, and Thomas Middle, Middle Ditch, and... He, um, I've seen some of his movies. I saw The Bronze. 
that was last year and you know he, he kind of plays this same he kind of plays an awkward character usually i guess he's good at it but he's just he's kind of tall and he's awkward and but in this movie it wasn't the case i couldn't even tell it was him i'm it, it is animation so i couldn't see it was him but still his voice i it didn't click in my head so that's a good thing and ed helms plays the captain underpants um in this movie they're fighting uh professor p professor poopy pants the it's it's a fun kids movie the animation's great it's, it's a little bit crude so it goes with the comic books it's more of that comic book style it's not fantastic am animation but it definitely looks polished it doesn't look the the style is crude but the the animation itself definitely looks polished and it's good in that way um and then the the story it's you know it's not too overcomplicated it follows the books it, george and harold discover they manage to uh turn their principal who does not like them who constantly tries to get them in trouble um they turn him into a superhero named uh captain underpants and you know i have a feeling there's going to be a sequel to this one i kind of hope not because this movie ended well and they should just leave it and it was very it was fun and i want to leave it with the funness and you know they battled professor poopy pants and it's it's entertaining you're children can definitely enjoy this movie and it's not so mind-numbing that adults can't enjoy it either so that's going to be it for today's show of movie expertise needed hopefully in the somewhat near future i will actually have a guest to talk with so we can go back and forth and i'm just not talking straight to the microphone um if you guys like that please let me know in the comment section below um what you thought about the topics i talked about um, when I'm not on a, when I don't have somebody else in the podcast with me, I will probably do this format because it's easier for me to figure it out. And plus, I do want to talk about these movies, even though I didn't get a chance to review them in video format because uh, I waited too long to see them. Um, but that, that's it. Uh, please like, um, comment. Well, as I said, leave in the comment what you thought of this podcast, what you think of this format. Um, subscribe to my channel or depending on where you might see this hopefully I can get this on multiple formats so it's not just on YouTube so please um, hopefully within the next week or so I will have another podcast out thank you very much for listening bye <laughs>